Hello everyone! In this video we'll be walking you through how to create a SharePoint intranet with a mega menu. Like we see here, we have a top level site and there's a mega menu navigation. These different links redirect to other sites or resources or anywhere with a link. When we access the Blue Tree project, we're redirected to that SharePoint site, but the mega menu is still there. When you have a SharePoint intranet, all the sites that are part of that intranet are going to share the same navigation bar. So the Blue Tree project shares the navigation bar from the other site. Within the mega menu bar, we can create subheadings as well as links to other smaller sites, document library links, and even links to Microsoft Forms. With the shared mega menu, there is always a main site that is going to be at the very top level, which lets people quickly jump back to that main landing page of your intranet. For this to work, you're going to need to be at least a SharePoint administrator, but many of you watching this video will likely be a global administrator inside of your 365 tenant. Within a SharePoint intranet, we have one top level site called the hub site. Then we have other SharePoint sites that connect up to the hub site. All sites that are connected to the hub site will share that navigation bar. The connected sites are called a site collection. Connecting everything in this way doesn't give everyone access to all of the sites, but if they have access to one of them, they will see that navigation bar. Now, let's get started. We need one site to be our hub site. Usually, this is a landing page or a site for the whole organization, or even a large department. Usually, communication sites are used as hub sites, but that's not necessary. You can use a SharePoint team site if you would like to. If you need help creating a site and want to learn about the differences, check out our video on the topic. Okay, we're going to head to the admin console, so we'll click on the app launcher and click on admin. From here, click show all and head to the SharePoint admin center. Once you're in the SharePoint admin center, go ahead and click on active sites. This will show you every single SharePoint site that exists in the tenant. Alright, for this example, I already have some sites created. I have three SharePoint sites I want to connect up but this works for however many you want it to. We have a communication site called Talent Forge, which is the main site or landing page that we want to link to. We also have two team sites, Talent Forge ENG or Engineering and Talent Forge HR. When we open these sites, we can see that they're not currently connected. And I want that main Talent Forge communication site to be the hub site, and then connect all the other ones to it to share the same navigation. To do that, I will turn the Talent Forge site to a hub site by enabling it within the admin console, then by choosing hub. I want to register it as a hub site, so I'll select that option. I can change the name if I want to, but what's really important is that I associate people who can link sites to this hub. Then I'll just click on save. When we look at the Talent Forge site now and refresh it, we can see the navigation bar is available. Because there's an edit option on that navigation bar, that lets me know that this is the site that's going to distribute out that shared navigation. Perfect, okay. Now, to link other sites, we have to associate them to the hub site, this TalentForge site. Back in the admin console, I'll enable each site I want to connect, in this case, these two, and then I'll choose bulk edit. You can also do this one at a time. Then I'll click on hub association. I have to choose a hub site, and you can have as many as you want within your SharePoint environment. I'll choose Talent Forge and choose Save. Now when I go to the engineering site or HR and choose Refresh, we can see that they link back to Talent Forge. The shared navigation has kicked in. I can use that Talent Forge link to head back to the top site or hub site, and we'll see that we're here. So how do we customize this mega menu? Well, you always edit the mega menu or shared navigation bar from the hub site. The changes will be reflected across all the other sites that are connected. So from the Talent Forge hub site, I'll click on add link, and now I can add links to my other sites or any resource. I'll click the add button from the pop-out, and I'll leave link enabled. Now I just need to provide a link to the resource that I want to point to. In this case, the HR and engineering sites. But where do I get those links? Well, everything that lives in SharePoint has its own URL. I can go to the TalentForge engineering site and copy that URL. Then go back to the TalentForge hub site and I can paste that link here. I'll provide a display name for the link and I'll even have the option to open it in a new tab or not. I'll leave that disabled and then choose OK. And there's the link. 
I want to add the other one, the Talent Forge HR. So I'll just repeat that process. I'll add a link, copy over the HR site URL, paste it into the popout, provide a display name, and then confirm with OK. Great. Now I'll click on Save, and there's our new navigation bar. When I click on Talent Forge Engineering, that site will load, and the shared navigation bar is there. Clicking on the HR site, we can see the site load, and the navigation bar is there as well. Awesome. But what about drop-down menus? What if we want to add more links and have things pop out or even drop down? Well, we first need to think about what we want to link to. Maybe we want to link to the document libraries of that HR site, and the same for the engineering site. Remember that everything in SharePoint has a custom URL, so technically, you can link to any resource that lives in SharePoint. I'll head to the HR documents library, and I'll copy that unique URL for that location. Then I'll head back to the TalentForge hub site to customize the navigation. You'll see that the edit button for the navigation is only available within the hub site. And I'll click it and just add another link. I'll call it HR Documents, then click on OK to save it. To make drop-down menus, we have to make a link a sublink. So this HR Documents needs to fall beneath the HR Site link. Next to all of your links, you can click on the three dots, and there's an option to edit and delete, but we want Make Sublink. It's hard to see, but the HR Documents now is underneath the HR Site. And I'll just repeat that same thing for the engineering docs. I'll go grab the engineering documents library URL and copy it and repeat that process by adding it beneath the engineering site link. Same thing, I'll make it a sublink. When I click on save, now we have drop down menus. And clicking on the document library brings me directly right there. So we've quickly created this mega menu, and you can use these principles to create a SharePoint intranet with a mega menu to tons of different locations. If you ever want more links, just keep adding links or labels. Make sublinks and repeat. You can even have sublinks on sublinks. Remember that every single thing in SharePoint has a custom URL. Every file, folder, library, site, form, everything. You can link to any resource that has a URL. It doesn't even have to be a part of that site collection. You edit the shared navigation from the hub site, and all of the associated sites get the same navigation bar. We've hoped you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want more training and tips like this, check out our training resources in the link below. We have guides, training videos, and more.